My name is Tar Ibrahim. I am an agricultural engineer and innovator and a refugee. Since I was six years old, I have lived with my family in the Sahara refugee camps in Algeria, a desert where sandstorms are common, temperatures in summer exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit and drop below 32 in the winter. It nearly never rains. The soil is eroded and not fertile, water is scarce. Those conditions don't favor any kind of agricultural production which led to the almost total dependence of my people on food aid from the international community for more than 40 years. And despite that, my community faces serious health and nutrition challenges that also impacts our future. The Sahara traditional kitchen is based on milk and meat, and even today, livestock plays an important role for refugee families. However, as no grass can grow naturally in this desert environment, the only possibility to feed the animals is with garbage or food left over, which leads to poor quality and quantity of milk and meat. Knowing that traditional agriculture is not the solution made me look for alternatives to feed the animals, a system that saves water, time, money, and space. An American friend of mine from the University of Arizona, Philip Sadler, sent me a YouTube video about high-tech hydroponics for the production of green fodder, which allows us to grow fresh fodder without soil, using 90% less water, no fertilizers, in only a few days. Uh, I was visited by a United Nations World Food Program colleague who asked for innovative project ideas to help refugees produce any kind of fresh food. She came at the right time to find the right solution to test the possibility of producing fresh fodder in the camps. WFP Algeria, the WFP Innovation Accelerator in Munich and Oxfam came together to test H2 Grow hydroponics in the camps. We started our pilot with high-tech units powered by solar power and cost 40,000 US dollars each and produce 100 kilograms of green fodder a day enough to feed 33 animals. It was obvious that high-tech units are not the solution, but they inspired me to develop a local solution, low-tech hydroponics. While we managed to bring down the cost of the low-tech unit to just 10%, the productivity is still at 60% in comparison to the original high-tech version. What are the advantages of low-tech units? Cheap, uh, easy, uh, built with local materials, easy to use, easy to repair, and easy to replicate. With time, we developed different types of low-tech units, always keeping in mind the reviews specific needs and the context. It has become a project that's created by refugees, implemented by refugees, and benefits refugees. Over 1,200 refugees were trained on how to use the units. Hundreds of families are able to produce fresh fodder for their animals, animals in ensuring better health of the livestock and therefore better quality and quantity of milk and meat. What I was thinking could be a solution for my own animals has become a solution for a whole community and even other communities since anything that can be adapted to these extreme conditions can be easily replicated elsewhere in the world. I have worked with WFP and Oxfam to replicate and adapt H2 Grow Hydroponics to different locations and contexts, such as refugee camps, and schools. H2, H2 Grow is now growing uh, animal feed and fresh vegetables in nine different countries, including Jordan, Chad, Palestine, Libya, Peru, Kenya, Zambia, and Namibia. Today, over 26,000 people are benefiting from H2 Grow. In fact, some great knowledge, knowledge sharing happened from refugee to refugee and how to adapt this technology 
to local conditions and make it accessible to local people. Today, I'm working on low-tech hydroponics systems to grow vegetables that can work in the Sahara Desert. My garden has a variety of systems where I can grow 25 different vegetables, leafy crops, and herbs. My dream is to create a sustainable garden concept that provides families with everything that they need from vegetables, milk and meat from livestock. We can recycle water through different hydroponics units. We can use uh, waste from the kitchen and the garden together with animal manure to produce organic fertilizer for vegetables. In my prototype garden, I have fruit trees, vegetable plants, sheep, goats, fish, chicken, and quails, all in the middle of the Sahara Desert. I am convinced that H2GROW can be a solution for many more communities around the world who are facing increasingly difficult conditions created by climate change, such as desertification. Hydroponics work is not only because it's a good technique, but more importantly, because it allows people to be part of their own solution. Today, we are at the SDG Global Festival of Action. You have the power to create transformative change like this has done for me and my community.